students do the homework help video. Word problems part one, chapter three. Let's jump right into this very quickly. Um, here we go. Um, page 142. We're going to do numbers uh, 51, 53, and 56 through 58. 51 says you ate three eighths. You ate three of the eight pieces of um, pieces of pizza. You paid three thirty for your share. How much did the whole pizza cost? Okay. Well, personally, I'm thinking proportions. I have three pieces cost three dollars and thirty cents. So it says you ate three out of the eight slices. So if I want to know the cost of the whole pizza, that means three pieces is three thirty. So eight pieces would be um, X dollars. Okay, so here we go. Let's cross multiply here. Three times X, of course, is three X. Eight times three thirty is twenty four. 2640. And now simply divide both sides by 3. And x equals $8.80. So that's the cost for 8 pieces. Or in other words, that's the cost for the whole pizza. Okay, moving on to number 53. Uh, 10,000 square foot pizza was created on October 11th, 1987. This pie was eaten by 30,000 people. On the average, how much did each person eat? Okay, no problem. Take the total square footage and divide it by 30,000 people. Now, if you type that into your calculator, 10,000 divided by uh, <coughs> 30,000, uh, you're going to get one third or 0.3 repeating. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means you took 10,000 square feet of pizza and divided it up into 30,000 pieces so you get 0.3 of a square foot. Now a square foot is one foot by one foot by one foot by one foot. Okay? Now, divide that in thirds. And that's what each person got. So you got a piece that was one foot long. And here is one foot, but that's also, 12 inches, divide that by 3, we get 4 inches, 4 inches, 4 inches. So, each person got, on the average, a piece that was 1 foot long and 4 inches wide. Okay, that's it. Moving on to number 56. Number 56. Um, let's see here. A homeowner is installing a garden or is installing a fence around his garden to the right. He has a perimeter of 216 feet. Find the garden's dimensions. Well, guys, think about it. Perimeter means the distance around something. Okay? So, if I take this side here to x plus this side here 3x plus this side here 2x plus this side here 3x that should equal 216 because when I add up all four sides that's the perimeter which is 216 feet so this is really simple to solve. 
x. These are all x terms. So write your x once, 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 is 10. And so I have 10x. Divide both sides by 10. And x equals 21.6. That's not your answer. The question is, find the garden's dimensions. In other words, they want to know what the length is and what the width is. Okay, so the length is the longer side, which is 3x. x is 21.6, so 3 times 21.6 would give you uh, 64.8. Now that's feet because your 216 is in feet. Now the width is the shorter side. It's 2x. And of course x is 21.6. So 2 times 21.6 would give you 43.2. So the, dimen the dimensions of the garden would be 64.8 inches by, of course, times, like this means by, so 64.8 by 43.2, okay, or feet, sorry, feet. Okay, so there's the length, there's the width. Alright, moving on to number 57. An eagle flies up to 30 miles an hour and dives at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. Okay, use this information, um, write and solve an equation to help us answer these questions. Okay. Question number A is, what is the least amount of time that an eagle, an eagle could take to fly six miles? Now, if I want the least amount of time, that means I want the fastest speed, okay? And the fastest speed when it's flying is 30 miles an hour, okay? So that's, that's a rate I can use, 30 miles per one hour hour. Okay? Now, what is the least amount of time that an eagle could take to fly six miles? So, 30 miles, one hour, six miles, x hours. Okay? So, 30 times x is 30x, six times one, six. Divide both sides by 30, and we get 6 over 30 reduced to 1 fifth. So, 1 fifth of an hour is how long it would take an eagle to fly 6 miles. Now, 1 fifth of an hour, that means if you want to know the exact time, take 1 fifth times an hour, which is 60 minutes. So one fifth of sixty minutes of means multiply. So one fifth of sixty would be twelve over one, or just twelve. So you're welcome to put twelve minutes for your hours for your answer, or you're welcome to put one fifth of an hour for your answer. That's up to you. Okay. Moving on to part B, an angle spots a fish and it dives, okay? It's um, one mile, the eagle is one mile above the water. What's the shortest time it will take? Now, we just right up here, it can dive up to 100 miles per hour. If we want the shortest time, that means we want the fastest speed. So I have a nice rate of 100 miles in one hour. 
and this angle is diving one mile. So if 100 miles is one hour, then one mile would be x hours. So here we go. 100 times x, 100 x, 1 times 1, 1. Divide both sides by 100. And my answer is 1 100th of an hour. Okay? Now, if you want to convert that over to minutes, we'll write 1 100th times 60 over 1. And look at this. It's going to be less than a second. So an eagle can dive one mile in less than one second. Okay? Let's see. 20 goes into both of these. So we would get three-fifths of a second. Three-fifths of a second. That's really, really fast. Okay? Um, so, if the fish saw the eagle, he would have less than three-fifths of a second to respond. All right? Pretty cool. All right, number 58. Um, write and solve an equation to find the length of the side marked x. Now, these two triangles are similar, which means their sides increase and decrease proportionally. Okay, so I can say 6 changes to 10 as x changes to 5. Now cross multiply. 10 times x, 10x, 6 times 5, 30, divide both sides by 10, and x equals 3. And that's it. So this length right here would be 3. Pretty simple. Alright. Okay, moving on to number 51 on page 149. Segment. It's a little tough here. It says the sum of the sum of three numbers is one twenty-three, and then it gives you some information. The second number is nine less than two times the first. The third number is six more than three times the first. Find the three numbers. Now, watch carefully. If I take my first number plus my second number plus my third number. I will get first number, second number, third number. I will get 123. Now notice how all the information they give you is based on the first the first number. Look, the second number is 9 less than 2 times the first. The third number is 6 more than 3 times the first. So your numbers are based on the first number. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put first number, second number, third number. Now, because this number here and this number here are both based on the first number, I'm going to call my first number x. Now, my second number is what? 9 less than 2 times the first. So 9 less, take away 9, 2 times the first. What is my first? x. So 2 times x minus 9. Look at it carefully. Make sure you see this. 9 less than 2 times the first, and the first is x. Number 3, a third number is 6 more than 3 times the first. So 6 more than three times the first. So there we go. So for my first number I put x plus, for my second number I put 2x minus 9 plus, for my third number I'm going to put 3x plus 6. And that should give me 123. So let's see, let's simplify this side. 1x, 2x, 3x, 6x, negative 9, positive 6, negative 3. Now bring 3 over, 
make it a positive 3. 6x equals 126. Now divide both sides by 6. And x equals 21. Alright? x equals 21. That's not the answer. It wants to find the three numbers. So x is 21. So my first number is 21. My second number is 2x minus 9. So 2 times 21, 42, minus 9, 33. And then the third number is 3x plus 6. x is 21. So 3 times 21, 63, um, plus 6 would be 69. There we go. This number is 9 less than twice as big as 21. This number is 6 more than 3 times 21. And if you add all these three numbers up, guess what they equal? 123 just like they're supposed to. So there's your answer. That's a tough problem. Watch that again if you need to. I have 52. You have a 90 pound calf you are raising. You expect the calf to gain 65 pounds per month. In how many months will the animal weigh 1,000 pounds? Well, pretty simple guys. He already weighs 90 and you want him to weigh 1,000, right? So, if we subtract those two, sorry, he already, he already weighs 65, so he weighs 1,000. No, it's 90, sorry. And he already weighs 90, then obviously he's going to have to gain 910 pounds, okay? That's how much he's going to have to gain. How much will he gain per month? 65. Let's just simply see how many times 65 will go into 910. Okay? So, I've got my calculator real quick here. 910 divided by 65, 14 months. Okay? So, in 14 months, the calf will gain 910 pounds. He already weighed 90. So that's, that's 1,000 pounds. All right, number 53, the bill for your car repair was 458. All right, parts was 339. Labor was $34 per hour. Find the number of hours of labor. And yes, if you want to, you can write an equation and solve it. You don't have to. If it's easier, that's fine. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, it's up to you. So, total cost was 458. Part of that was parts. Let's subtract out the parts. And you'll see you're left with $119. So students, they charge you $119 of what? Labor. Well, it's 30, cost of labor is $34 per hour, okay? So, if you were charged $119 and every hour is $34, just see how many times 34 goes into 119, and you'll know how many hours of labor um, they worked. So, 34 goes into 119, if you type it in your calculator, you will get out 3.5. So the technician worked three and a half or 3.5 hours at $34 an hour. That's $119 plus the parts was 458. So how many hours of labor was there? Three and a half hours. Okay, number 54. In any triangle, the sum of the measures of the angles is 180. Now, look how all this information is based on angle B. Angle A is four times as large as B. Angle C measures 20 less than B. So these angles are based on letter B. Okay, so I'm going to call B my X. 
in my other problem like this, everything was based on the first number. The, th the second number is 9 less than 2 times the first number. The third number is 6 more than 3 times the first number. So I call my first number x. Okay? Now here, it's angle A is based on B, angle C is based on B, so angle B is going to be my X. Now what's angle A? It's four times as large as angle B. So angle B is X, so 4X. Angle C is 20 less than angle B, so angle C is angle B, which is X minus 20. Now, find the measure of each angle. So, if I take my first angle, plus my second angle, plus my third angle, I'll get 180. So my first angle is 4x, my second angle is x, and my third angle is x minus 20. Now, let's solve the equation. Simplify both sides. There's a 1 here and a 1 here. So we get 6x negative 20 equals 180. And 20 to both sides, we get 200. And we will get 30.3 repeating. Okay, so come up here. Angle A is 4x. 4 times 30.3 uh, will give you. Well, I've got this written down somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to give you 133.3 minus x, which is just 30.3 degrees. And then c is x minus 20. So put 30 in for 30.3 in for x. Subtract, and you will get 13.3 degrees. Okay? So there's your four angles. Now if you add those up, you'll get 179. Um, now this should be 33.3 right here. Sorry guys. 33.3. So if you add these up, you will get 179.9, which is about as close to 180 as you're going to get. Okay? Alright, number 55. The school's drama club charges $4 per student. The club borrowed $400 from their parents. After paying the parents back, they made $100. How many students attended the play? Okay, well think about it, guys. They borrowed $400, and when the play was over, they had $100 left over. So that means they sold $500 worth of tickets, right? I mean, they paid back their parents, plus had 100 left over. So, how much was each ticket? $4. So, this is really simple. Take your $500, divide it by 4, and you will get $125. All right. Excuse me. 125 students. So, 125 students came to the play. They each paid four dollars, thus they made five hundred. They paid off their parents and still had a hundred left over. Okay? So everything makes sense. Number fifty six, you earn nine dollars an hour. On major holidays you earn twice that. You earned a total of four hundred and five dollars for the week, including Thanksgiving. Alright? So, they want to know how many hours you worked on Thanksgiving if you worked 35 hours during the week. Now think about that, okay? You get paid $9 an hour, and you did that for 35 hours. So you made $315 out of your regular pay, but your paycheck was 405 so out of that 405, 315 was your normal pay. Okay, so I'll subtract that, and we will get 
ninety dollars. Okay, so that means you earned ninety dollars on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, now how much pay do you normally get? Nine dollars. How much pay did you get on Thanksgiving? Twice that. So you made eighteen dollars per hour. So eighteen dollars per one hour equals ninety dollars per how many hours? We don't know. That's what we're looking for. How many hours did you work on Thanksgiving? So one times ninety, ninety, eighteen times x, eighteen x, divide both sides by eighteen, and you will get uh let's see. Five hours. Now, probably a lot of you, when I got to this point here, a lot of you probably just took 90 and divided it by 18, and that's fine. I just wanted to use the equation this time. Either way is fine. So you worked five hours on Thanksgiving Day. If you want to check your work, take five times 18, and then add that to this, and you will get $405. Okay, 57. This formula here relates the nozzle pressure in to the distance the water reaches D. Okay? How much so? In other words, I can put something in for D and solve for N, or I can put a number in for N and solve for D. Okay? So, how much pressure is needed? Now remember, N stands for the pressure. So how much pressure is needed if I want the water to reach 50 feet? That's my distance. So where the D is right here, I'm going to put a 50, and I'm simply going to say, what does N my water pressure have to be? So I'll put a 50 in for D and solve for N, because guys, um, if I want the water to go 50 feet, then it has to, the water has to be at a certain pressure. Okay, multiply everything by 2 to eliminate your fractions. 2 times 50, 100. 2 over 1 times n over 2. Your 2's cancel, leaving you with n. 2 times 26, 52. Bring the 52 over, make it a negative 52. And we have 48 equals n. Now your n is pressure in pounds per square inch, or PSI. So your answer would be 40 PSI. That's how much pressure you need on the water for it to reach 50 feet. All right, number 59, 58. Forgetting about air resistance, the upward velocity of the water at a fountain is given by this right here. So here's my formula. T is the number of seconds, okay? And V is the velocity. I'm going upward, the water slows down until the top of the stream. The water has a velocity of zero feet. So here's your drinking fountain right here. The water comes up and it comes down. Okay, so it has velocity on the way up and also has velocity on the way down. But right here at the top, it has a velocity of zero. Okay, so how long does it take a drop of water to reach the maximum height? Well, guys, use your model. Think about it. When the velocity is zero, because I said, when the water comes to the top, your velocity is at zero. So when V is zero, find out the time that it took for the water to hit zero. Okay? Zero velocity. Bring the 28 over, make it a negative 28. Divide both 
sides by a negative 32. A negative over a negative is positive. So your answer will be positive. And um, 28 divided by 32 is 0.875 seconds. That's how many seconds it would take. Less than a second, 0.875. All right, okay, moving on to number 61. A publishing company needs to enter 910 pages uh, into its word processing system. One person you have at work there can type 15 pages per hour. Another person's a little faster, they can do 20 pages per hour, okay? How long will it take the two people working together to enter all of the pages? Well, honestly, guys, we don't need an equation for this. If they're working together at the same time, and they're typing 35, 15 plus 20, 35 pages per hour, okay? So every hour, they're pumping out 35 pages. How many pages do you have? 910, so divide that by 35. How many times does 35 go into 910? Because remember, every 35 pages is one hour of work. So 35 goes into 910 26 times, so it would be 26 hours of work to get all of this done, okay? If these two people are working together. All right, number 64, there are four times as many nickels as dimes. The coins have a total of, total value of $6. Find the number of nickels. Okay, pretty simple. I have four times as many nickels as dimes. So my nickels is based on my dimes, okay? I have four times as many nickels as dimes. So, I'm going to go on times x, and my nickels are 4 times as many, so 4 times x, 4x. Now, a lot of you probably want to say 4x plus x equals 6, and that's wrong, because the value of the coins is $6. They're not saying we have 6 coins, they're saying the value is six dollars. So I'm going to take all of my nickels for x and multiply them by 0.05 because that's the value of a nickel. I'm going to take all of my times x multiply it by good, 0.10. So I take all my nickels multiply by 0.05, take all my times multiply by 0.10 and I should get six dollars. So let's work this out. 0.05 times 4x is going to give me 0.2x. Use a calculator if you need to. 0.10 times x is 0.10x. Next, I have two x terms. So write your x once, add them together. 0.30 equals 6. Divide both sides by 0 0.30, and x will be 20. 20. So, dimes is x, which is 20. So 20 dimes, and then x is 20. So 4 times 20 is 80. So I have 80 nickels. Okay, so 20 times 80 nickels, find the number of nickels, 80. All right, okay, let's move on to page 158. On page 158, we're doing number 45. Okay, number 45, a computer center has um, charges, non-members, $5 per session, so the cost of one computer center is 
five dollars per session, five S. The other place um, is three dollars per session, but you have a one-time yearly fee of twenty-five dollars. Okay, let's see which place is better for you to join. So I take my 5s and I set it equal to this right here. Bring your 3s over, make it negative, and you're left with 2s equals 25. Divide both sides by 2, and s equals 2. 12.5. Now, it's impossible to go to a place 12 and a half times. So, I'm just going to say this. Alright, listen carefully. I'm going to say if you if you use a computer 12 times or less, use the $5 per session. If you use computer 13 times or more, then use the $3 per session on the store that has a $25 fee. Okay? So again, guys, point of equilibrium, okay? Not too bad. I'm right, 46. Same type of problem again. A rock climbing gym has non members pay 16 per day for the gym and $8 per day for equipment. So the one, the one place charges you $24 per day. Okay, and that's because um, you pay 16 for the gym, $8 for equipment. Now the other place charges you $6 per day, but you have to join a yearly fee of $450. Okay, so let's see which place is better. I have this side here. Set equal to this side here. Bring your 6D over, make it a negative 6D, and we're left with 18D equals 450. We're going to divide both sides by 18. And D equals so, you know what to write. I'm not going to write it for you, but I'll say it. If you go to the gym 25 times, then it doesn't matter where you join. But if you go less than 25 times, join the place that charges you $24 a day. If you go more than 25 times in a year, then join this gym here that charges you $6 a day. Okay? That simple, guys. Not difficult. Okay, moving on to two more problems, or last problem here, me, excuse me. It's kind of three in one. A scuba diver starts at sea level. Okay, so here's the sea. Anytime a person starts going down, more and more water is on top of him, putting more pressure on him. So the lower he or she goes, the more water pressure they have, okay? So, here's what I know. Um, a scuba diver um, starts at sea level. Um, and we have a model here that says pressure equals, water pressure equals 64D plus 2112. So, D stands for how many feet you go down. Okay, so if you go down 20 feet, put a 20 in here, and you'll, know the, and you'll know what the water pressure is. Okay, or let's say I told you the uh, 
water pressure was a certain number, like a thousand. You could put a thousand in here. And let's say that I told you, and I know nothing about diving, so my numbers are probably not very good numbers. But let's say you had a special water suit, and it could only go up to a thousand pounds of pressure, water pressure. Well, put a thousand in for your for your water pressure, and you'll get out how many feet you're allowed to go down. Okay, so it's really helpful. Okay, solve the formula for d. Okay, let's get d by itself. P minus 2112 equals 64D. Divide everything by 64. And I end up with P over 64 minus um, 33. 64 goes into 2112. 33 times exactly. These cancel equals D. So there. I did step one or number 37. I solved the formula for D. Okay, now number 38. Suppose the pressure is 4,032. How far down is the diver? Okay, so here we go. Here's my formula right here. They're telling you the diver has um, this much pressure on him right here, 4,032. So P is, I'm going to put 4,032, take 4,032, divide it by 64, minus 33, and you will actually get 33. So how far down is the diver? Well, he's down 33 feet. Now lastly, number 39 in the original equation is P a function of D or D a function of P. Well, here's the original equation. And look, guys, this is P is a function of D. That's what this is. If I told you to take this equation and write D as a function of P, you would know that means to get D by itself. So if P is by itself, then we say P is a function of D. So when the equation is written like this, that's written such that, so that P is a function of D. When it's written like this, when it's written like this, this would be D is a function of P because D is all by, is all by itself. Students, I really hope this help video has been helped to you. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to call or email.